Hi, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a reed that I have formed, put wires on, and I put a wrapping of some sort onto, and I'm going to make a shoulder on this and start to clip off the ends uh, and start scraping. Okay, so what I want to do with this particular reed is the first thing I want to do is make sure that the end on this is perfectly flat. Okay, this one has is not quite that way, so I'm just going to take it on a file, and I'm going to hold the reed, and, and, and make a couple of swipes on it, and so it's now it's now flat and straight. Okay, uh, my wires here are a little bit long, and so I'm going to take them and I'm going to clip them off just so that they, I don't stab myself quite so, so much. I'm leaving these a little bit long because I like to um, form these wires so that I can tell which way my reed ought to go up and down. I'll talk about that sometime later. Okay, so this is a good time to, to ream out the end. Uh, I use um, a, a tapered drill bit. These, these are done for uh, uh, putting in wood screws uh, this this drill bit happens to be a 1364 drill bit, and then I have a collar on it so that I don't go too far. And I don't have to think about how 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 deep I'm reaming. Okay, so that's that's nice. Uh, uh, I will have to do this a couple of times because in the forming process, uh, the uh, fibers of the of the cane have been compressed. And so this is, as soon as it gets wet, it's going to swell up again. Okay, so I'm good on that. I need to put a mandrel back in this. I'll just use a standard mandrel. Okay, and I've got my reed on here. And what I want to do now is I want to measure off how long I'm going to do this. Now I cut my reeds to uh, two and a quarter inches. Okay, to start out with, there, there, uh, there are two and five sixteenths. Well, there are two point two two one five to two point two 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 zero inches. Uh, two point two one five, two point two two zero inches when they're finished. And so I'm going to start out. I always make my reads uh, a little bit long. So this is, uh, I'm going to measure out to two and a quarter. That's about 30 thousandths of, a, uh, uh, 30 thousandths of an inch too long. So when I get to that point, I'm going to cut it off. I'm also going to measure where I want my shoulder to be. And for me, that's an inch and an eighth. I'm sorry, I don't have the metric equivalents in, in hand uh, right now. So you folks will just have to do the conversion yourself. Okay, so I've marked that off. And what I want to do is I want to take my reed knife. This is a very interesting reed knife. Uh, I've been using this reed knife for oh, about 60 years. And it's a Shrada, S-C-H-R-A-D-E, uh, -E, Walden, New York, uh, number 160 something or other, 163. Uh, my father was a printer and, and I got this from him uh, that was given to him by um, a paper company representative, uh, Crown Zellerbach a representative. Crown Zellerbach doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, so this is this is my reed knife. These are, these are really nice knives. And I'm going to just take it and I'm going to score the reed this way where I want my shoulder to be. I like having a shoulder rather than just using uh, what came off my, my profiler. And then I'm going to just look back this way and cut into the reed that way. I like having a sharp shoulder. 
The other one just isn't exact enough for me. Okay, so I do this on both sides. I like having to do it with a reed knife. My reed knife is only sharpened on one side, and the bevel is only on one side, so I can lay it flat against the against against the reed, the blade, and it won't dig in. So I just pushed that way, and then folded the knife up to do that. Okay. Sometimes a little bit of filing along that edge will clean, clean it up just a little bit. But you don't want to make a dent in your reed there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, I've got a nice shoulder. And now I want to clip off the end of the reed at my two and a quarter inches. Okay, so I'm setting it in my, oops, wire's in the way, okay. So I'm setting it in my reed trimmer. I, I've done this many, many years. I used, just used a pair of nippers to do this. And as I got older and older, I got crookeder and crookeder in cutting off, off the, uh, the, the end. I just wasn't able to, to always cut it straight. So I have found that I finally bought one of these guys, and, and I find that uh, it's an interesting thing to work with, but it certainly does get my, my, my reed straighter. What I've done is I'm, I'm on my mark. I don't know if you can see my pencil mark or not. I put the reed in, in, in the middle of what's going on here and cut it off. Okay, I like to work with, let's see how well I did. I, I use a, a, a dial caliper a lot uh, in, in doing and in working with my reeds, and this is just to see how well I did. Ooh, two point, well, uh, 2.49, that's, uh, that, that's uh, 2.249, that's pretty close to 2.5 inches. Okay, so, so I did really, really well on that. Okay, I will take also take my clippers, and at this point I will cut off a small corner just so that I don't catch the corner on anything and, and rip it off. Okay, cool. Okay, so I've got the makings of a reed here. Now I work with my reeds, there it is. I work with my reeds and this is this is my uh, this is a dial indicator on a stand. Uh, these are commercially available for, oh, gobs and gobs of money. Um, I made this one, I made this stand myself uh, when I was in high school. And um, let me just make sure it's close to zero. Well, close to zero. It's a pretty good stand. It's a pretty good stand and has, has served me very well. I also have markings on here that are uh, that tell me how, how my read is, how far into the read I've, I've worked with. And they're at every eighth of an inch, about every three millimeters. Okay, so just to see what it is, what, what, my, uh, what my profiler does, I tend to profile fairly thick because I don't that my reed doesn't form well if, it, if things are very thin. So I'm starting here at about 15 thousandths and going to about 35 thousandths. So that is, is about, is, it, it, that's about four thousandths thicker than I would, than I would make my reed all along. Yeah, this one's a little bit thinner. Yeah. And so th those are center line measurements. And so, you know, this is kind of what's, what's going on on this. And so uh, I need to take off some, some cane on this. So what am I doing? Making off cane. And what I need to do is I need to find my plaque. 
There it is. Okay, so I found my plaque, and what I do, I've inserted my plaque. This is an arrowhead plaque. It, it happens to be a very uh, uh, old fox one that still has the fox label on it. Uh, they don't make them that way anymore. Anyway, so what I do in, when I'm doing this is I'll just rough this out to basic measurements. I have a set of center line measurements that I work to. And uh, in making my reads, I kind of know how much I need to take off. Um, and all I do is work with the center line measurements, and then I, I wet the reed, and I see what's going to happen. So I'm going to start, and I first start um, about about in the in the tip third of the reed, and I'll just go. I'll just take off a specified number of swipes at it. I, these are I use very light pressure. I just make sawdust. I don't make shavings. Uh, I go 15 on each side, and then I go to about two thirds, and I do 10. And then I do the whole read at about eight. I will also, when I do my scraping, I also do just a real light scraping on, on diagonally, kind of over the, the uh, tip half of the reed, and that's to try to take out any bumps that I may have, have introduced in my scraping. So, Okay, so this should be ready for uh, ready for a first blow. Let me get some water, and I will be right back. We just wet it a little bit. And we'll see if it grows. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay, so uh, at this point, I will actually put it on the bassoon and see what happens uh, in, in, in how it plays. Uh, my reed end is fairly uniform. You see, I, I look at the two sides and, oh, I've got... I like my reeds to smile at me. Uh, the only thing that ever does in my life. Okay, so this looks like it's frowning. That looks like it's smiling. And so what I do is I actually take this and I make it so that when I have my reeds, I can tell. I'm going to take this and I'm going to bend it around. And I'm going to have a nice high. This is my top side. This is my top side on my reed. And I'll just pull the other one. Flat. It's a little bit long right now, but I'll trim it off later. And so th th this will tell me which way is up. Uh, when you get old and you can't see anymore, it's nice to know. Uh, anyway, so I'll can keep on working on this read until it's happy. Um, the the kind of things that I use, there are two guides that I uh, use for, for scraping reads. One is the Selmer... Uh, Teacher's Guide to the Bassoon, uh, by, written by Homer Pence many, many years ago, probably around 1960. Uh, it, I don't know if it's still in print. There, there is a version of it online, but it's missing one page. And uh, Chris Davidson uh, uh, also has a web page that has a very comprehensive uh, listing of, of problems you might have with your read and, and where to scrape in order to fix them. Okay, so this is... Pretty much it. Thanks. Bye.